Ah, cleanup time. Everybody's favorite time of art class, not really. So how do you get the kids to clean up on time? Like, because I said it's clean up. I know you don't want to stop working, but hello, it's time to go. And how do you get them to clean up so things are put back neatly and in their correct place and that they're ready for the next group of kids to roll in and start creating as well? So I've come up with a couple of things and I'm always trying something new because there's always um, the excitement of the new I have found with my students and with myself. So one thing that I've recently started doing is, well, let me backtrack. One thing that I think helps is to really have a signal, a sound or a bell or a chime. We use the gong in my room, the cleanup gong. And I think that that really lets everybody know that sound that it's time to clean up. You can say, hey guys, it's time to clean up all day long. But for some reason, there's something magical about a sound. And if you get a really fun sound that the kids can make, then it becomes kind of a, a reward. Who gets to play the gong in my room is kind of like an exciting thing. I used to even have um, a cleanup drum set, but with 30-minute art classes, that was really tough to just kind of squeeze that in as well. I do need to get it back out again because it was really fun. So I think having a sound, a signal to everybody that it's time to clean up really helps. One thing I used to do was I used to play a song, and I know a lot of people have cleanup songs, but I noticed that when I played cleanup songs that the kids would often talk over the song and or be dancing to the song, which I loved. We used to end it with We Are Family, which I love that song, and Celebrate um, is another favorite song of mine. And so I loved playing those songs, but at the same time, I noticed that they got the kids riled up, and I kind of need them to calm down and focus on cleaning. So one thing that I recently started doing was the um, the cleanup contest and I filmed myself explaining to the kids or re-explaining to them what the cleanup contest entailed and how they cleaned up and um, where was I going with this and how the cleanup contest works. So let me just share that with you right now. When you hear the gong, the cleanup contest has officially begun. You cannot win the cleanup contest if people have their voices on. It's level zero cleanup. The best statues with the tidiest tables win. Gabs, go for it. Rod, go for it. So now you see the cleanup contest and how simple it is. There are no prizes. It's just the fact that your table won and you get to cheer and then we all line up. The funny thing is all my kids have very specific places where they stand in line because they're going to PE and our, our PE teachers like them to be in alphabetical order. So it doesn't even matter who gets to line up first. So it's one of those really great rewards where, where you don't even have to do anything. One thing that's really helped me out a lot are my art teachers in training when it comes time to clean up because usually I will say, Guys, it's time to clean up. Our teachers in training, this is what you need to make sure that your table is doing. And having that one person be accountable for that table really makes them focus and say, and delegate jobs. Okay, you need to put your stuff away. Okay, this goes there. So I can't stress enough how much I've loved having those art teachers in training. And the kids love that job. They really take a lot of pride in it. The times that I've forgotten to assign jobs, they remind me because they really look forward to having that little badge on and having that responsibility. So that's helped me out tremendously as well. Sometimes it's good to also have another kind of carrot. And one carrot that I will say that I'll dangle, which we haven't really done it a lot this year, is having an end of the class game. And one game that we often play is something called the smartest artist. To play the smartest artist with a group of kids, you really just have to have three kids, and I always pick the, a boy and a girl that are standing super nicely in my line, and then I pick one random kid who's also standing nicely, and this is how we start it. I'll say, and now it's time for, and the kids all say, the smartest artist. With our host, and I'll introduce the boy that I picked, and our hostess, I'll introduce the girl that I picked, and our sound effects engineer, and then we want to introduce that person we picked. And the sound effects engineer is literally in charge of just sound. So I got dollar store sound makers, whatever you have on hand. And thank you. Let's give a round of applause. This is from the Dollar Tree. 
And what I'll do is I'll just ask questions. I'll say, okay, this question is for the boys. Boys, what are the three primary colors? And my host will look and see what boys have their hand up, call on one of them. If they get it correct, then the boys get a point. And what you can't see is that it says boys and girls on my dry erase board. And then they just get a little tick mark there. And then we hand it over to the girls. If the girls or the boys get the answer wrong, I said no, no, no. Um, uh, yeah, no. Best thing ever. Um, then I let them try it one more time. So let's say the girls don't know what the secondary colors are. One girl doesn't, then we'll pass it off to another girl before we hand it over to the boys. I do that because I try to always make it so the kids have a tie. Um, and that's just... I don't know. We always have a ton of favorite things. And if I say, hey, guys, we need to clean up early because we're going to play the smartest artist, that's something else that will really get them cleaning up. Um, I feel like one of the things that's really helped me get clean up um, rolling a little bit better is really delegating responsibility and putting it back on the kids. I used to, when the kids would leave, change tables up, rearrange supplies, get things put away from second grade, back out for fourth grade, and it becomes pretty taxing. I don't like feeling rushed, and I don't like it when another class is coming in, and I haven't had a chance to just sit down for a moment and take a deep breath, because I don't usually have much time, if any, in between classes. However, when I have the kids doing the cleanup contest, I have also started saying, hey, so-and-so, go collect all these tubs and move them out of the way. I'm actually in the process of having some shelves created for my room so that my kids can have their bins labeled, not their personal class bins, but just supply lens labeled, so they can collect the supplies and carry them and put them away. Like I said, I'm trying to be better at delegating those jobs out to them. Even with 18 years of teaching, you're always learning something new um, and trying new things. And I think that's what's going to help. That's what helps me avoid burnout and help me hopefully become a better art teacher. So cleanup time. I'd love to hear what you guys do. Like I said, the art teachers in training really put them to work as far as being like a table captain goes. Try the cleanup contest. The kids love it. Their favorite part is banging on the tables and who doesn't love that? Also, if you're trying to motivate them, think of a really fun game or a simple activity or even a short video that you can use as a carrot to get them to clean up. So there you have it. Cleanup time. Woohoo!